Hey there, how are you all doing? Welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kay Van Davani. Really looking forward to my next special episode with Ben Kaufman. He has already been on my show a few times, uh, either on a panel discussion one on one. So we're going to do like a basic tutorial on how to create a single key wallet on Spectre Desktop Bitcoin. And um, we're going to talk, you know, cover, of course, a lot of other aspects. And I want, you know, to Ben to d demonstrate how to create that, what to take, you know, what to be careful about, what to be cautious about. And uh, it's pretty easy. We don't want to go into multi-sig wallet because I think that's more for intermediate advanced users. But I'm really like targeting the, the noob out there, the beginner, just to, you know, take care of their privacy, the security to be connected to the full node and, you know, and to be just relieved um, and to have a really solid uh, single key wallet where they can store their Bitcoin funds. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. Let me know if you have any questions. Please follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel or my podcast platforms. And if you have any questions, comments, let me know afterwards. My DM is open. My email address is hello at thetotalconnector.com. Make sure you follow uh, ben Kaufman on Twitter, and uh, you can also join the uh, Spectre's Telegram group. And yeah, without further ado, this is the special episode tutorial on Spectre Desktop Single Key Wallet with Ben Kaufman. So hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Davani, and uh, my special guest uh, for this very special episode and probably series of educational tutorials uh, videos, which I'm gonna, which I'm planning to do, uh, is uh, Ben Kaufman. Ben, how are you doing? Thank you so much for your time, and thank you, you know, for doing this tutorial. Hey. Yeah, sure. Thank you for having me. Ben, you've done an awesome job together with your team, um, Stefan Snigidev, uh, uh, Moritz, um, uh, I guess a lot of other people working in the background. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you've, you've really received um, uh, visibly like so much positive feedback and testimonials and reviews, and there's just so much involvement and engagement uh, with, with it being the Telegram group of, of Spectre. Um, I just want to, you know, just start off maybe Ben, with the basic stuff, like what is Spectre? How, how did you maybe, you know, come up with, uh, with the development of Spectre? What, why are people so excited about? And I'm going to, of course, tell you my reasons why, I'm, why it makes me so excited. And, um, and then, you know, we'll go deeper, deeper into the rabbit hole and ask you some questions. And this is fundamentally important that I emphasize this, this, this tutorial video or this uh, episode is especially made for noobs, for beginners, for really inexperienced, like, you know, uh, <laughs> non-techies like myself. Um, and, you know, we'll go into the security, privacy, issues, any common issues, problems that could potentially arise. So, Ben, why don't you just kick it off? What is Spectre? Um, what are the features, the advantages? And yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I, I didn't start Spectre. So, uh, Stepan and uh, Moritz uh, started it as a project. And uh, later on, me and Kim joined, basically just because we saw how awesome this, this thing is. Um, so what Spectre does is just gives you uh, a, an alternative uh, user interface for Bitcoin Core. So if you are running a full node for Bitcoin, uh, a lot of people just find it too hard to, to actually use it. So they download it, they run it, or they buy some uh, node in a box or something and run it. And then they don't actually verify anything with it. And that's that's just the feeling that the purpose of running a node. Uh, and then the, uh, a lot of people, again, a lot of people are using hardware wallets, uh, yet everybody is using uh, the hardware wallets with the company servers. So if you're using Trezor, you're using uh, their, uh, their servers and uh, you're trusting them with the balances and you are leaking your privacy to their servers. Uh, so it's there's just uh, some some barrier for using Bitcoin Core and your hardware wallet, um, or just uh, utilizing it for for multisig or anything like that. Uh, and what what Spectre does, it just tries to make it a lot more accessible. So it allows you to connect your, your Bitcoin core with your hardware wallets, uh, use them as single-sig, as a multi-sig, 
do basically a lot of anything you you want to uh, you want to do with uh, <clears throat> sorry anything you want to do with your Bitcoin Core. Um, just tries to to simplify things and make it a lot easier. Uh, instead of instead of having to use command line uh, and and stuff like that. Awesome. Can you just explain? You know, uh, this is you know beginners tutorial. What is what is a Bitcoin Core? What, why do we need a Bitcoin Core? What is so special? What, what makes it so unique? The bit, why do we need it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the thing is that uh, besides Spectre, before before I started using Spectre, so we had uh, either two. Uh, to install uh, Electrum and use, uh, and in order for it to connect to our Bitcoin Core, it needs to be with uh, Electrum personal server, uh, which setting up is uh, is a lot of headache, uh, at least for me, and uh, not very user friendly. Um, and the the other option was to use a lot of hardware, a, a lot of sorry, a lot of uh, CLI commands. Um, which again isn't very, it's doable for, for technical people, but it's not very convenient uh, anyway. Uh, and then Spectre just, what it tries to do, it tries to, to just make everything uh, much more accessible. So just anyone running a Bitcoin core node can actually use it more, more easily. Um, since Okay, so since uh, Spectre Desktop, uh, um, uh, it connects or you can sort of sign or uh, what, what do you call it, like uh, sign up or, or register or add uh, a new device. Um, and, you know, there's, mm -hmm. you know, there's no disadvantage, there's no good or bad uh, hardware wallets. It's always, you know, I think, uh, what do you say, like uh, comparing like a Trezor 1 with a Trezor 1, a Trezor T with a Cobra Vault, which is air gap with, a, uh, with the ultimate <laughs> uh, like a super secure, paranoid uh, hardware wallet, such as cold card, which I have myself now. Would you say, you know, for the noob out there, um, if uh, let's go right into, you know, into the essential question, like, um, would it be wise for a noob to, to you know, uh, set up a single wallet, a single signature wallet, a single wallet with, um, with, a, with a Trezor, um, is it still, let's say, my question is, is it still safer, substantially safer than, um, you know, than, than just connecting it uh, through, as you said, to the company's uh, server? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're just, if you're already uh, using Trezor, the, the benefits of using Spectre instead of um, the Trezor website or something like that, uh, our first that you are using your own full node, so you don't have to uh, leak your privacy. Uh, so this is not exactly security, but more of a privacy concern. And the second thing is that uh, to validate your own transactions, uh, so you don't have to trust Trezor with, uh, with telling you the correct balances. So they can't lie to you that uh, you have uh, such and such balances or such and such uh, transaction was confirmed when it wasn't or something like that. Uh, it just uh, allows you to validate everything yourself. Uh, and yeah, so this is like the, the benefit between using Trezor websites uh, and uh, Spectre in, in a single SIG setup. Uh, with a multi-SIG, it's, it's different because the, uh, the companies don't really have any interface for that. Uh, so with Spectre, what you can do is you can set up a multi-sig with multiple wallets from multiple vendors, uh, which is, again, very uh, uh, increases the security by quite a bit. Uh, I would say it's more complicated, and so I would, I'm not sure I would recommend it for a lot of uh, noobs, but for a, more, a little more advanced users, it's definitely worth it uh, if, if they're using... Uh, if they were using it to, to store any substantial amount. Uh, because when you're, yeah, when you're diversifying your, uh, your hardware wallet vendors uh, or using multiple devices, uh, it's way more secure uh, and uh, it's, uh, sorry, it's way more secure and uh, the redundancy that you're getting from having multiple uh, uh, options for, for signing uh, it just makes it a lot better. 
Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, let's go. Maybe let's just start off, you know, step by step. How how would you um, instruct or, you know, um, help a noob like setting up? Let Because I can only relate, you know, uh, as we, you know, discussed maybe before, only to my own experience uh, and my own, you know, reviews and testimonials and problems I've maybe I've had. And um, now, you know, I'm, I'm good with it. You know, I'm, uh, I think I've, I've I've, you know, I've I've learned how to access it by a Tor browser, uh, my my note, and through my note I can just open the Spectre app, and uh, there I can see you know my single sig, sig wallet, my multi sig wallets, and um, um, maybe go you know step by step and what are the potential or existing problems or common issues and problems that people are facing or people are asking you in the Telegram group or. Uh, what have you? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, sure. So I'd say probably the, the first thing uh, is the, the first point, which is uh, somewhat difficult for, for people, is uh, connecting the, the, like the initial connection to their full node. Uh, so you can see we, are, we try to, to uh, make it slightly, uh, slightly easier. Um, but it's still, uh, it can be a pain if the Bitcoin core node is not just directly installed on your machine. If it is remote, uh, then you'll have to, um, sorry, you'll have to connect to it uh, with, uh, to configure yourself the connection. So Spectre can, if Bitcoin core is installed in the, um, uh, in the default location, Spectre can auto detect it and then it should be quite easy to connect. But if not, then you need to configure stuff yourself with uh, the username and the password. Uh, and that can be sometimes challenging for people. Uh, but again, it depends. Or again, if, if you're, um, another thing is that uh, is configuring the, the full node itself. Because when you're downloading Bitcoin Core, it won't work right out of the box there is still just another step where you need to edit the configuration file of Bitcoin Core and just try to there as server equals one and restart Bitcoin Core. Uh, but again, this is like something that you have to know uh, in order to, to, to figure out that this is a problem uh, sometimes. So I, yeah, I would say this, this step is where uh, a lot of people are getting into trouble sometimes. And we're trying to to help for the Telegram group, or uh, just add some some guides in in the um, other in the app. Just give some tips um, where it, where it makes sense, or just um, refer to external guides. But yeah, that's something that that's like the the biggest uh, uh, point where where people get stuck sometimes. I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem, you know, I remember um, I had is that I'm, I'm not even sure whether it works now or not, is that the um, for testing purposes, you know, I open up a, a single or a single, I think a single wallet with, uh, uh, with Trezor 1. And I had to, I couldn't connect my Trezor directly through the laptop. I had to s stick it into the... Uh, well, into my node, into my uh, yeah, into my my node, the uh, to the raspy uh, raspi. Uh, so, is that is that issue already resolved, or 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 what is what is the solution there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now we have what is called this uh, HWI bridge, uh, which you can configure from from settings. So when you uh, download and uh, if you're using, for example, Spectre with, with my node, where it's already uh, running there, then what you can do is uh, download the Spectre desktop app uh, to your machine and then uh, go to the, uh, to the preferences. Uh, again, the, here there's, um, there might be some confusion uh, because the preferences I'm, I'm speaking of are of the desktop app itself. So it's not within the this uh, Spectre interface. It's not like here. Okay. Uh, it's above, there is the, um, when you're using the desktop app, 
uh, there is like a toolbar and then you can click on the uh, name Spectre. And under that, you will have a preferences uh, tab, which which you can click on and will open like uh, a preferences which are specific to the uh, to the desktop app. Um, and over there, you can uh, configure uh, to connect to your remote node, and you uh, you just give there the the remote node URL. Um, and the the next uh, thing you you'll need to set up. Uh, so this is one thing. And then the second thing you would need to uh, after after you put there the URL, it should just load the spec the remote specter and run this HWI bridge in the background. And just the last thing you'll need uh, you'll need to do is to go to the uh, settings page. Uh, to um, I'm not sure I have this on this user because I'm using Spectre with multiple users. Um, you know, yeah, but uh, because this is not admin, I don't have it in this user. But what you'll do is um, is go to this. Uh, let me just. I'm using I'm not the latest version. Sorry. I'm using a development version. So, okay, so we, as you can see here in this uh, HWI bridge, so you'll have this HWI bridge uh, URL you can uh, select here. Uh, and here, you, what you'll need to do is you'll need to change it to, uh, you have it over here. Uh, you'll just need to, by, by default, this is the URL you'll need to change it to. So you'll just need to uh, paste this like, like that. Um, and then it should work. So with this, yeah, so the first step is in the preferences just to load the remote specter. And the second should be to uh, connect uh, from here. Okay, so let me clarify. So this is the default setting, but uh, is uh, but when I have like a my node, uh, is what mm -hmm. what's what's the exact like? Is that HTTP with the with the uh, IP address of my node? No, 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 that, that, that's also no, no. So the my node uh, your uh, URL uh, goes to the first uh, stage in the preferences screen. So in the preference screen, you will. Uh, enter your, your my node address uh, and over there um, you, you just save it and it connects there. But here you will need this address, so the local address, because what Spectre does uh, with the desktop app um, when it's in this uh, so-called HWI bridge mode, uh, it just runs uh, a very simple local server of, of Spectre. Uh, and to, Essentially, what what the server does uh, is just runs this uh, component of of hardware wallet integration, um, and here and the address is basically local because this uh, server is running locally. So the app will just talk with the local server, um, and that's it. What what else is? Are there like any other common issues or steps that need to be taken care of uh, in order to have? Because you know, usually the way I do it, because most mostly you know, I'm at my girlfriend's place. I'm not at home. I'm not on my local network, so I um, I I open and access uh, my note through the Tor browser. I uh, um, you know open up the Spectre app via my note on that on my dashboard. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but uh, what is what is still not possible, for example, is I cannot. Uh, but maybe that's you know maybe further down the lines uh, that should be asked uh, is I have an issue with the QR code, like like uh, like scanning QR code, for example, with my Cobo Vault. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, do you want to address that maybe? Um, so. Scanning with uh, scanning of QRs with uh, the Cobo Vault, you mean for Tor or? Yeah, 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 via Tor, yeah, via Tor browser. Uh, so there is currently uh, a, a limitation. We're still trying to, to figure out a way around it, uh, which is with, uh, with scanning uh, QR codes um, back into Spectre uh, when you're connected over Tor. So the Tor, when you're connecting uh, over Tor, browsers just uh, block access to, to the camera. Um, and we're just, we're trying to, to figure out a way to, to pass that, but it's still currently, uh, you will not be able to scan it back directly. 
uh, what what you could do uh, instead is just um, is go to just any website that can scan a QR code. Uh, there are tons of that, uh, and then you will scan it uh, over there and just paste back into Spectre. Um, but right now we don't have um, we don't have an easy way to to mitigate to to overcome that. Okay, but eventually that hopefully will be resolved. Uh, is so the the only way that I can um, somehow uh, you know do a well maybe you can explain what is a partially s signed uh, Bitcoin transaction, uh, so called uh, PSBT, and that I and I if I can't do it with QR code or scan it, I can still you know go back and forth, which is of course not convenient, but. Uh, do it with the micro SD card, with it be the Cobo Vault or the cold card. And I haven't mm -hmm. test I haven't tested the Trezor one via uh, tr the Tor browser. So I'm I'm not even sure whether that could work in my case. Uh, just you know plug it in inside my laptop in order to sign or to validate or you know just go through this whole process. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I'm. Um, uh, yeah. So Trezor One. Um, just with uh, all all the um, devices connected through USB. Um, should should work with Tor normally if you're using the desktop app. Uh, if you're using Tor browser, it's a little more tricky. Um, it's possible, but it's a little more tricky. But if you're using the desktop app, it should work normally. Um, if you're um with the the SD card. It's, it's just file uploading, so it works everywhere uh, regardless. Um, with, yeah, with cold card and, uh, and Kobo, which support that. Um, yeah, and QR codes, uh, just uh, there is currently the, the Tor limitation, but for USB and for uh, SD card, there shouldn't be a, a problem uh, over Tor. Okay, cool. Um... So let's go maybe, um, let me tell you what I have. Um, and I think I can show that that shouldn't be an, any problem. Um, can you stop your mm -hmm. screen share? Then I can, yeah. Yeah, so that's my, uh, that's my, yeah, my Spectre desktop uh, version 0.9.2. I don't know what the current version is as of November 29th. 2020 is that the current and latest version I have? Uh, no, so right now it's uh, it's uh, ten point one. Okay, uh, so zero point ten point one, right. and yeah, I think mine will just uh, yesterday released an update with that. Oh really? Uh, okay, think. okay. Yeah. So I have to maybe you know just upgrade or update my my note version, and then I should have the current version of it. Uh, so mm -hmm. this is how it looks like. Uh, if I go to the settings, and that's here. So in Bitcoin Core, it says a username, my node, the password, uh, host, the port is 8032. Uh, is there anything I can I can show you know for the you know for, uh, for the listener or viewer out there, um, mm. which is important the H -W HWI bridge uh, without you know uh, risking my opsec. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I see. For, I think the HWI. Wait, no, uh, the HWI also contains stuff uh, okay. because when your your Tor URL, which is not exactly private, but it's best not to show, I guess. Okay. Um. So yeah, but but what what we could do is just show, for example, maybe the the basic flow of how to uh, to add a wallet um, to add a device to add a wallet uh, if you want. Uh, I can <clears throat> sorry, I can show that uh, if you want to. Yeah, please. Yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um. Yeah. So we can just add a device here. Um. The first thing uh you, you can see is just uh, you need to select which which device you want to work with. Uh, I have a Trezor one uh, connected here to to the uh, laptop already, mm -hmm. so I'll choose Trezor. And practically, you can you can add any wallet right now, right? Even the Bitbox uh, by um, um, Shift mm -hmm. Crypto Security or whatever it's called, right? So 
There's, mm -hmm. there's like yeah, so we have nearly all yeah. wallets are included. Even I mean, I'm not a fan. I don't have a ledger, so I'm, I heard there's a lot of problems with ledger. But <laughs> I'm not even going to go. Maybe you can comment about uh, about the ledger a little bit. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, yeah, Trezor, Trezor One, Trezor T, uh, Cobo Vault, Bitbox, Hard Cold Card, of course. Uh, expect to do it yourself, but that's another chapter. <laughs> and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, if you want, there's Electrum if you're using that, um, and Bitcoin Core as a hot wallet. Uh, though, I, since it's a hot wallet, I won't recommend using that, or only for tiny amounts. Um, but yeah, but the, the hard wallets, I think every, about everything I supported. Uh, so we just go with the Trezor now. Uh, yeah, so, so the first thing, you'll need to just put a name for the device, so it can be anything you, you want, basically. Uh, so let's call it just a treasure or a one, something. Um, here, uh, well, here you don't have to do anything. Uh, you can label the the, um, the XPUBs. So what we'll do now is click here and uh, it will get the XPUBs. Uh, so if you want to, um, to label it differently, you can. Uh, so, for example, here you can see that this is uh, the purpose of, of this. Uh, this one is uh, multi-sig uh, segwit. The most as the purpose of that is uh, multi-sig nested. And uh, if you notice, every one of these has this um, hashtag uh, zero. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just because the account which they are using is, is zero. So you can see the zero here mm -hmm. or the zero here. Uh, that uh, just uh, denominates the, the account uh, which they're using. So account in, in this sense is just um, it's just for separating. So assuming you want to have uh, two separate wallets, uh, but using the same device. Mm -hmm. So just for, for accounting or if you're managing, I don't know, multiple wallets for, for any reason. Uh, so if you want, for example, to add another um, another account, you can do it from here. So you just select the account number. So starting from zero, which we already have, I uh, we could add from one, uh, but I just won't want to add it here because well, I can, but I could just remove it, I guess, uh, just to make stuff faster. Um, yeah, and since we're going with uh, with single sig, yeah, I could just delete here the uh, nested ones. Uh, we don't really need it. Uh, sorry, the multi-sig ones. Uh, and, uh, really can I, ben, can I ask you, like, uh, when you say like a different account or second account, does that mean like it derives? Uh, it's all the same. Like it's the same seed. It's the same. Like derives from sort of a mother seed, uh, or or mm -hmm. am I mixing up something with the uh, yeah. with the you know uh, 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 parents' keys, uh, children keys? Maybe maybe you can uh, dive mm -hmm. a little bit into so that it people understand, you know, yeah. what, what we're talking about. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll try to, to simplify that. So you have your uh, your seed, Let, let's uh, let's go that way. So you have this um, master uh, private key uh, from which you can derive your all your public keys and private keys, okay? And this is stored on your hardware wallet uh, and never leaves there, uh, never leaves the, the hardware wallet. Uh, from this, uh, from this um, uh, master XPUB, uh, sorry, master uh, X, um, master private key, mm -hmm. you are you can generate the the private keys which never leave the the hardware wallet, and you can generate public keys or um, semi or like children uh, child uh, master public keys. Uh, so this is derived. Uh, if you can see here, this derivation we have. So you can think about it like some tree with, with branches and every um, derivation here after each uh, slash, let me try to increase it a little bit here. So you can maybe see better. Uh, so here you can see that after every slash, uh, you have um, a different number and there's this H. Uh, you can ignore it for a moment at least, uh, but you have some uh, a certain number so this is just a, a different path. This is a, a different uh, path for deriving the what is called the the, the XPUB. So the master uh, public key. 
So it, there, M is like the, the master uh, of master public keys. So it's like the, the root of, of this tree. And from there, you're going with different branches. So here, branch uh, number 49. And then you choose branch number one. Um, and then here, branch number zero, which is the account branch. Uh, so everything uh, in that sense is, is standardized. Um, so for, uh, 49 is standardized as the um, single key, single sig uh, nested. And SegWit single sig is standardized as uh, A84. After that, there is this, uh, in this standard, at least, there is this branch of um, one because it's a, a testnet key. So there is a dif the difference between testnet and mainnet branch. Uh, mainnet would be zero. Mm -hmm. uh, testnet is, is one. And then we have the account branch. So if I edit, for example, uh, just account number four here, for example, you'd see that these end with, with a four here. Mm -hmm. And this, um, let me, you know what, I'll just create with this account one, for example, and I'll just keep the two, so uh, the two of the uh, single sig, uh, so I can show them after importing the XPub itself. Um, <clears throat> so if uh, so, if you have this, uh, this third, a certain derivation, it will reach. Uh, it will um, run some function basically on the um, on this M uh, on this um, master of of public keys, and will generate um, a se a separate uh, public key from that. Um, a separate sorry, separate master public key from that, uh, which is unique, and you could use it to drive addresses of of Bitcoin addresses basically. Um, so this is just a way to manage between accounts and to have a standardized derivation. So uh, you you have both separate uh, accounts on on your device, and that um, wallet software is know how to uh, where to look for funds uh, if you're trying to restore your funds uh, from from another software. Uh, so let's uh, does that make it clear? Or? Yeah, I think basically yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the XPUB is, uh, and this will just, now we'll just extract the um, the XPUBs, which are in each of these derivations. So uh, we'll ask the, the device, um, Spectre will ask the device for each of the XPUBs at this derivation. Uh, the device will use the, uh, the public key, which it has, uh, and the private key, and then the public key, which it has, basically for deriving this, uh, uh, with this derivation path as an argument, it will derive the XPUB uh, matching it, and it will return it uh, for, for our use. Uh, the XPUB, uh, I'll just briefly mention that an XPUB is, uh, is not uh, exposing uh, the, the private key, obviously, of, of, the, um, uh, of your wallet, so you, can, you cannot use it for spending any money. Uh, but if somebody has that, uh, he, he could know all the funds which uh, are in uh, uh, wallets generated with this XPUB. Uh, so it can be a privacy concern if your XPUB is leaked. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is why, for example, uh, you would prefer using Spectre uh, and not um, Ledger Live or Trezor in terms of uh, in terms of privacy, uh, so your XPUB will not get sent into the uh, the servers of the companies, um, and and if if that happens, they can track your your uh, transaction history. So this is a way to avoid that. Uh, so let's just click get over USB. Um, here it will ask. It's it's Trezor One. It will ask me for uh, to prompt the pin on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, in just a second. Yeah. Okay. So you see that it imports uh, quite quickly, actually. Uh, it imports uh, all these uh, XPUBs. So if, if you look at it for a second, so there is uh, this instead of the M, which we have here, we have this. This is called the fingerprint. 
which is uh, just um, a very shortened uh, version of uh, of exp of the hash of this um, master public key, uh, essentially. So it's like a very short, unique identifier for the device. Uh, and after that, we have this uh, the derivation path which we used. And these together are the our 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 uh, the derivation uh, in this uh, bracket here, and then we have the xpub itself. So this is the value, and you can notice that here it doesn't start with uh, it starts with a upub and not uh, not an xpub because uh, it is first of all because it is uh, on testnet. Um, so uh, testnet has uh, has is starting with either T uh, U or V um, instead of X Y or Z, and then it is just um, a matter of difference between uh, the standard, which is called uh, Slip 132 uh, from from Trezor, or just the normal XPub. So this, uh, if it starts with a T or with an X, it's just uh, the normal standard kind of. Mm -hmm. Uh, which everybody knows basically, but if it starts with uh, with a U or a V, it's it means that it's uh, like this in the special standard of Trezor and um, that Electrum uses, for example, or stuff like this. But these standards are just a matter more a matter of convenience, so they are convertible between one another. Um, it's not like it's uh, something unique. You can derive the, the XPUB from the UPUB. Um, yeah, so now that we have your, everything we need, we'll just add device. Yeah, so now we could uh, just click here, create wallet. Um, so, but just before that, mm -hmm. Um, I'll just show that it just here it imported uh, everything that that we wanted. Okay, so we can see your Trezor is connected as a device uh, or added as a device. Uh, just curious, maybe it's relevant. Are you you are on your own local network or are you doing this via Tor? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm on my local uh, network. And um, and you connected your Trezor just you know as as usual via USB to your laptop or computer, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, just, just ask. All right, go, let's go ahead. Yeah, sure. So you can just see here, um, also just mentioning uh, again about, so the derivation path will just hide it for a moment. And you can see here that I can easily toggle between this uh, TPUB thing and the VPUB. So it's it's not a, like some, it's basically just a, a difference in, in presenting that. Uh, but what would be, what yeah. is the difference uh, with its activated or deactivated? Those two again? Uh, those two? No, this is for this is for exporting it. If if you want to export it, okay. So this is just a screen for for exporting. So it doesn't have uh, functionality. It doesn't matter where you leave that. Uh, it just for convenience. If you want to export it, uh, like the main use case would be for uh, for Electrum uh, mobile. If you want to uh, to use uh, like an air-gapped uh, phone with Electrum Mobile, uh, so you'd need to to export the uh, the expubs of all the of all your cosigners, uh, but in a certain format. So you'd need it without uh, the derivation, I think, and uh, with the slip uh, 132 enabled. Uh, but again, this is just for, for convenience. Um, yeah, so now to, to add wallet, we can just click on the add new wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go for a single SIG because we have only uh, one device, uh, Trezor One. And here we can choose between our um, between our XPUBs. So we have the one starting with, with a zero for the uh, account zero. And here with uh, for one for the uh, account one. I will just go that so zero is the, is the default. We, we can just go with that. Uh, here we can select between SegWit and nested SegWit. And so what you is, can see that we, what is more yeah. compatible? Is that like nested is more compatible, or which one is more like you know with other mm -hmm. wallet addresses? Like, okay, maybe just explain mm -hmm. that. Thing. Yeah, sure. So the there was these uh, legacy addresses which which we don't support. So legacy addresses are what uh, what was used in Bitcoin, uh, basically uh, 
until until SegWit was introduced. So you had these legacy addresses, the the addresses starting with one and slightly later with with three. Um, so these these are uh, legacy addresses which practically all wallets uh, support. Uh, then we uh, SegWit was added, and then uh, at especially in the beginning, now I think pretty much all wallets or Almost every wallet supports uh, SegWit, probably. I don't recall anyone that doesn't now, but uh, just just in case uh, you have this, what is called a nested SegWit. Uh, so it's um, it generates a SegWit, um, compa- it's ge- it generates like a SegWit address uh, with which is nested inside uh, a legacy address. So it makes SegWit look like legacy. Uh, it's less uh, fee saving, so it's, it's less uh, fee efficient from the normal SegWit. But you might want to to have that uh, if you're using some legacy service which doesn't support SegWit for some reason. Um, also, I think most already support that. Uh, so this is basically the uh, difference. Uh, they are encoded differently, um, and seg- so they look a bit different. And uh, the SegWit address is um, is more fee saving. Uh, the nested SegWit is um, more compatible with older wallets or stuff. Uh, but it it doesn't matter that much. I'd say I, I, I'm usually uh, just preferring to use SegWit. Um, right. And it saves fees, and that's an important aspect, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, we can choose SegWit. Here we can. Um, so if, if I toggle it, you can see that the derivation here, it's changing to nested and the key is changing uh, from for 84 to 49, because this is like the, the standard derivation for nested SegWit. Um, but we can just go with the, the SegWit now. Uh, naming it, we can just call it, um, I don't know, wallet Trezor. And uh, it, whatever we want to scan for existing funds, so I don't have funds on this uh, Trezor now, um, and um, full risk scan. But if you want, you can do a full risk scan from uh, from whichever block. So the um, so the full risk scan will just uh, go for the entire blockchain and try to uh, tr- to find all the transaction history. And the faster thing would be to to choose UTXO only rescan. So this will uh, sell, uh, will find only the current balances. So it's uh, it it's quite faster. So it's like probably around one or two minutes uh, instead of sometimes uh, a few hours even for a full rescan. Uh, if you have an old wallet. But it doesn't show the full transaction history, only the transactions which are still uh, unspent, which are still in in your wallet, um, which which is usable uh, at least, and and you can um, run that in the beginning, for example, uh, just to see everything works, and then do a full risk scan like overnight before going to sleep or something. Uh, we can cancel it because we don't have any funds anyway. Um, but then, yeah, and here you can, if you have multiple keys which you could use, like we have the multiple uh, accounts, I can switch between them. Uh, but let's just go with the default. And yeah, I can create a wallet. Uh, so here you can see that um, it prompts me uh, to save this uh, this backup file, mm-hmm. which uh, I could. Uh, and if you're using multisig, this is very relevant. So if you're using multisig, uh, you should probably save this this backup PDF next to each one of your of your devices. Mm-hmm. Uh, would, you, because, would you recommend like printing it out? Uh, and my second question uh, yeah. is, e- even yeah. if you have like a single sig, would it still be wise to whatever write it out or print it out just in case? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think for a single sig, it it's, it can be like a matter of convenience because it does contain like a QR code you could scan uh, to another Spectre instance or like a, an app like fully noted or Blue Vault also I think. Uh, so if you want to to have that option, um, but it 
doesn't really matter that much for, for a single uh, SIG wallet. Um, just could be convenient uh, in certain cases. Mm -hmm. But for a, a multi-SIG, this is quite important, I would say. Um, and I'd, I'd recommend uh, either print, printing it or saving it uh, in, in the cloud or saving it encrypted in the cloud. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of options and it's all, all based on how, uh, how much do you want to, uh, uh, to risk your privacy, let's, let's put it on, on one end, mm -hmm. and how much you want to, to make sure that the, you have redundancy in the uh, backup of, of the wallet, because you have to have access to, uh, to the data on this file or on the Spectre uh, app in order to uh, spend from, from the wallet, uh, if, if it's a multi-sig. So there are a lot of a lot of options, and you can always choose best on uh, what's best uh, for you in terms of uh, privacy uh, and usability. Right. So there are sensitive data in that backup file, and is that like would it be useful just to back it up in order, like if a, just in case, you know, this is I think the paranoid questions. I think every noob like, what if you know for whatever reasons I don't have access to Spectre to my node? Like, can I just you know uh, uh, teleport it or what do you call it? Like extrapolate it, like, like import it into another. Uh, system such as uh, you know whatever that is Electrum or uh, you know all these new um, uh, de desktop versions that there are mm -hmm. Nunchuk or whatever there there is I mean is is that like uh, why yeah. Is yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so the, this file contains anything you'd need to to import that and also a QR code for that uh, for for the data. Um, but yeah, so the, the file, basically the, the important thing it contains is the wallet descriptor. So the, the descriptor is, uh, is basically a description of, of your wallet in terms that Bitcoin Core understands. Uh, it is a standard which Bitcoin Core uh, is using and therefore a lot of others, including us, are using. Um, yeah, so th this descriptor is just a standard way to, to describe your, let's call it describe your wallet to your, um, to a wallet software. So if I, I'll just show it actually, we can go to the settings here, uh, click export and ex export. So you can see here the QR code. And the descriptor looks like this. So here you can, it's more technical, so I won't get deep into that, just very briefly. Here you can see the wallet script type. Uh, here the, uh, this fingerprint, which uh, you remember, might remember and the derivation path and the uh, XPUB. Um, and a little more information, but this is, um, yeah, so this is more technical. Um, but this is something which a lot of wallets are now uh, integrating uh, in order to to work on on this, on the same standard. Mm -hmm. um, so Very useful. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we added a new device. We created a new wallet, a single SIG wallet. Very simple. Is there anything like the user? You know the beginner beginner user the noob should be really cautious about or you know mm -hmm. uh, have uh, you know just just for security yeah, privacy so, or what have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd say that the most important thing before you're receiving funds with with a single sig wallet is well also with multi sig but uh, with multi sig you have uh, a few more concerns but the main concern with with single sig is to first verify addresses on device. So we have here this uh, receive tab here, um, which uh, shows you the receive addresses uh, you can you can use. So in QR code or like uh, or just the, the address itself. And we have here get new address and under it you have display address on device. Uh, this allows you to verify that the address uh, displayed on Spectre is really uh, yours. That the Trezor or whatever wallet you're using is actually owning the private key uh, for that address. 
Um, this is important because the security assumption you should have when using hardware wallets is that your uh, main computer, which you're using, is uh, which you're using Spectre on, is compromised. Uh, this is the main benefit of, of having a hardware wallet um, to to make sure that you can uh, safely use your um, use Bitcoin uh, even if the computer you're using it from is compromised. Um, so what's important is that if your computer is indeed compromised, somebody may try to trick you with uh, showing here uh, a different address which doesn't belong to you. Uh, and the way you can verify that it, uh, it, it isn't the case and this address really belongs to you is by going to display address on device and actually verifying that uh, I'll just re-unlock the, uh, the Trezor. Um, but doesn't Trezor like, uh, like ask you by default to validate, like to you know, cross-check the whatever address, like uh, the whatever receiving address you generate, isn't that like by default already? Did you have to um, confirm, so like, you know, by pressing confirm button and you compare, you know, the, the whatever transaction ID or receiving address? That's, I mean, that's my experience with the Trezor One, but I'm not, not sure with them. I'm missing something. Yeah, so, so I'm not sure how it works with, uh, with the Trezor uh, UI uh, of, of like the Trezor website mm -hmm. or, the, or the Trezor suit. Uh, but with Spectre, you can generate addresses. Uh, uh, whenever you want, uh, you can click on this generate new address and you will get a new address. Um, but if you want to, to, to verify, you just need to, to click this button. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how, how Trezor does it in their UI. Okay. Um, so I can't show the, like the, the Trezor screen here, but the addresses, uh, the addresses do match. Um, so yeah, so so I'll just confirm it on the Trezor. You can see here uh, the address, and then you are supposed to look at your Trezor screen and make sure that this thing uh, it matches the address that your Trezor shows you. Okay, gotcha. So if I confirm, if I confirm that, then it says ours that it was verified successfully, uh, because Spectre also runs uh, a check with the response it gets from from the Trezor, but this is just for uh, just an a level of um, to, to make sure, but you shouldn't rely on this message. You should rely on what's displayed on your Trezor all the time. Okay. Uh, this is very important for you, for security. Let me ask you one important question, because, you know, there's this, um, this uh, really fundamental difference between Trezor one, uh, Trezor, uh, hardware wall, any hardware wall that you plug it in via USB, such as Trezor. And you've got Kobo, you know, which works air gap through, you know, by scanning QR codes, mm -hmm. or you can also do it the same, you know, with cold card, like, uh, you know, going back and forth with a, a micro SD card, validate, sign, whatever. So there's no attachment, no connection whatsoever through the computer. But is it still like if you go through this process and you set up a single SIG wallet with Trezor, is it still, let's say, a few degrees more secure, even if even though it's connected via USB cable? Like, do, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So um, compared to what? Uh, like compared to the air gap method, like cold card or, or yeah, cobalt, well, because you know, there is no the... USB cable, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's much. It's uh, I would say it's a few degrees more uh, more secure to use an air gap wallet. Mm -hmm. So it's I, I would definitely recommend using a, an air gap wallet over a wallet connected via USB, because uh, simply because the attack surface uh, when connecting via USB is quite larger uh, than with uh, with uh, an SD card or especially with a QR code. Um, so just just the attack surface is much uh, lower with with the air gapped ones, mm -hmm. uh, but even if you're using a, um, a hardware wallet which is connected via the, the USB, it's still a lot better than using a, a hot wallet which is stored on your uh, on your computer which you're using for with with internet. Uh, so if you're using uh, a hot wallet on your computer, this is much worse than using. Uh, some something like Trezor, which is connected to your um, to your uh, computer via USB. 
Uh, so I'd recommend like the the worst thing. Well, the worst the worst thing is leaving it on an exchange. Well, let's let's leave that to another thing. Uh, the second worst would probably be uh, to leave it on a, on a hot wallet. Um, then um, I'd say uh, then um, probably using uh, something like Trezor or uh, an or Ledger. And I'd say an air gap wallet is probably like the best idea uh, for for a single sig. So either with with uh, um, with Kobo or with a cold card or even with an air gap computer, uh, if you want to do to do that, that's also very good. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as soon as, you know, it becomes a little bit convenient because uh, the only thing that really uh, somehow irritates me right now, I cannot use the Cobo Vault, uh, the, you know, the, the air-gapped QR scanning uh, via the Tor browser, which is no problem. You know, I can take out, you know, micro SD card back and forth like mm -hmm. I do with the cold card. Um, let me ask you before I forget that question, let's see someone, you know, is, is uh, you know, we've gone through this whole process, we've set up the, the Spectre. Let's just, you know, for the sake of simplicity, say, uh, you know, it's someone really that has set up a MyNote uh, premium version, They've set up their Spectre, they've connected it, everything runs, and they have somebody in the family, like a family member, you know, or somebody, you know, the partner wants to, can they like, you know, have their, um, uh, have their, let's say, Trezor wallet connected to, uh, you know, to my, um, uh, uh, to my Spectre, to my node, uh, it, you know, just, 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 in, just to make sure that they're not, uh, communicating or connected uh, via the company server or, or Trezor server. Is that possible? Um, yeah, I just, so you can use, um, you can set up your uh, your Spectre in a way which is uh, also accessible to, to family members. Uh, either if you're running it, for example, if you're running it on the my node, then you'll just need to, to share with them the um, either the, the Tor um, the Tor URL and the the password which you're using to log into Spectre. Um, maybe I'll just uh, briefly just uh, me just mention if I'm already talking about that that when you're using uh, Spectre uh, over Tor, you really should uh, set up um, uh, a password because the Tor address isn't uh, isn't private. So you should definitely should go and set up uh, the authentication. Uh, to to be uh, with with some password, um, yeah. But uh, again, back to back to the question, uh, you could uh, share with them this this store address and the password which they could use. You could share with them the the node itself, so the credentials to the Bitcoin Core node, and then they can set up their own Spectre, and then or something like that. So it kind of depends on. Uh, what specifically you, you want to share, but you can always do that, yeah. Okay, so that would mean they, um, like a third person, like some a family member can, would have to download the Spectre, you know, via their uh, the GitHub uh, page, right? I mean, is that what you're saying? Like they have to download the Spectre uh, um, um, software on their own computer, laptop, and, and then what? I... Or... Yeah, so so if if you're using it with my node, then they could access it through Tor browser also. Mm -hmm. uh, but ideally, yes, they would install the um, uh, the Spectre uh, software on their computer, um, and then just connect to your node uh, either via the um, if it's a my node again and it's Spectre is running there, then they can connect to the Spectre itself, uh, as we said in the beginning of the video. Um, but if if not, then they can just uh, connect. Uh, again, I don't have know this user, but here we have this uh, Bitcoin Core settings, and then they can set up the uh, username, the password, and the, the uh, URL of of the node, and then just save it, and it will, should should connect to it. Okay, and the URL uh, that that's the tour. You're talking about the tour URL, which uh, <laughs> which I can. I find and give them from where? I mean, is that like in the Spectre yeah, or in the My Note? Uh, no, okay, so gotcha. it's on, on the My Note side, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so then they can independently connect through my uh, Tor URL and and connect and you know and go through the same process that you've described before, like you know, add the device, create a new wallet, and then they're at least you know connected via you know a full node, uh, which you know preserves the privacy and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Is there anything else I I missed? Or I should have asked something important, which you know, any uh, a beginner mm -hmm. or a noob should really you know be careful about. Or yeah, um, no. I think I think it's um, mostly what, what I had. So um, maybe and just mentioned that here you could from the general settings you could uh, backup <clears throat> download the backup of all the uh, files which which Spectre uses. Mm -hmm. So if you're moving uh, to to another instance of Spectre or want to make sure you have a full backup of everything, uh, you can just download that. Um, here you just restore it if you want. Um, but this is like a general backup of all the wallets and devices uh, of Spectre. Um, besides this, um, no, I think I think that's that's the last thing. Maybe just uh, I want to mention. Okay. Um, so I've accessed my, I'm right now, you know, in my node, uh, uh, in, in my Spectre uh, desktop via Tor browser. And you know, the, that Tor symbol you, you see in the right upper corner mm -hmm. on, on your end. Um, in, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. If, uh, no, says, I think I'm in development mode, so I, it's not available because I'm in debug mode because it's... Okay, uh, gotcha, so. gotcha. Because if I, because I'm right now in the Tor browser, and if I click on it, on that symbol, it mm -hmm. says, um, it, there's a pop-up, it says Tor service is down. And then if I go on the info symbol, it says accessing Spectre with a Tor hidden service. Running a Tor hidden service with Spectre allows you to securely access Spectre from any remote device and location. Please see the following instructions for setting up Tor hidden service with Spectre. What does it mean? It's first of all, it, it's uh, gray. I mean, it's, I guess it's not activated. That's why it says Tor service is down. But what does yeah. it practically mean when it says Tor service is down? Yeah, so the Tor service is down is uh, maybe I should we should rename it to, to something clearer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not good with, with naming stuff, mm -hmm. but Tor, uh, Tor server is down. It just means that there is, uh, so because you're using MyNode, the MyNode itself also exposes Spectre um, over Tor, but otherwise, so, so you can access it over Tor even if the Spectre's uh, Tor thing is, is down. Uh, but otherwise, uh, if you want to access Spectre over Tor, Spectre itself can uh, can open a, a hidden service uh, by itself. Um, and this uh, hidden service is just so it's not for communicating with with the node or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Tor serve this Tor service. So just to start uh, a hidden service from uh, using which you can uh, access Spectre with uh, uh, from from anywhere um, you, you want. So it just exposes Spectre as, as a remote server you could access from anywhere uh, over Tor. Okay, gotcha. Um, okay, Ben, uh, do we want to like, uh, like what, what would be the moment when, where you would suggest uh, for a noob to begin like, you know, educate himself, herself on, on using a multisig? Do you want to like, like maybe briefly go over the, the multisig process, like what is important or when mm -hmm. is, especially when you have, a, you know, a substantial, relatively substantial amount of whatever is individually, but that I think that's where mm -hmm. multisig comes into play um, or becomes yeah. relevant. <clears throat> yeah, I think so too. So I, I would say, if, I, I'd say like the right time is if everything I said in this video was at least most somewhat clear, then you probably will will be fine with a multisig. If if the video uh, this this video is like way uh, you feel quite overwhelmed, then probably not. But if you are mostly comfortable with, with what I'm explaining, then you should be able to also do a multisig, in my opinion. Um, so just I think uh, a multisig uh, is is just uh, well the benefits are that you don't have to 
uh, to trust a single um, a single device uh, in a single location, and that was provided to you by a, a single company, uh, which may or may not have been compromised. Uh, it just gives you uh, a lot more points where you could uh, fuck up and still uh, and still uh, not lose your funds. Mm -hmm. Uh, so instead of a single point of failure, you have uh, two out of three, basically. You need to okay. you need that. Yeah. So uh, would it be like like practical? Like if if we had let's say, let's say you know uh, uh, two or three people have have a joint fund, you know, like a Bitcoin mm -hmm. fund, and or you know a couple, you know, and they like and they're in in different locations. And so they would mm -hmm. be possible. I sign with my with one device. Like let's let just you know stick to two of, out of three multi signature wallets. So I sign, and then another person in a totally different location in another you know another country could then mm -hmm. access it via let's say you know uh, as we discussed maybe through the Tor URL and and then go into that uh, wallet that multi sig wallet and sign with the second wallet or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can do this from from anywhere. You can save uh, pending transactions. So um, the PSBTs, you can save them and go somewhere or send it to someone uh, after you signed it or before you signed it. You can just uh, send it. They can import it into Spectre, uh, or if you're there using your your instance, they can just go to the uh, uh, they can go to it in this uh, in the pending uh, like in the unsigned transaction list. Uh, if you're signing it, then it will save your signature here, um, and you will, uh, and they'll be able to to sign that too. And if it's finalized, so if enough signatures were collected, they would be able to also uh, propagate it uh, to to the network. Um, yeah, so so that's definitely possible. Yeah, I think it's really practical, especially when you were talking about you know self sovereignty, censorship resistance. <laughs> Uh, I think that could be, especially uh, beginning now and especially in the future where it could become, you know, more and more important to, uh, you know, to have a really self-sovereign, uh, self-sovereignty and censorship and total censorship resistance and confiscation resistance uh, where like, you know, two or three more people ha are in totally different geographical locations and they can then, you know, sign independently uh, a transaction you know where i'm getting at like i think this is mm -hmm. this is maybe a, a, a total you know beautiful feature of this multi-sig uh, uh, wallet yeah yeah we can definitely do that uh this is yeah mm -hmm. all right um okay ben have i missed anything is there anything um uh, or can you maybe uh tell us a little bit like uh, is there anything in the roadmap are you guys working on user interface better, whatever user interface, user friendliness, uh, any features or anything that might be even, you know, beneficial, especially for noobs or, you know, people who who want to, you know, become more familiar with, with, with Spectre. Yeah, so we are trying to, to, uh, to add like a little more simplicity with, with the, uh, with the flow of, of the UX, so this uh, the add device uh, flow here is is quite new. So it used to look uh, like this. I think also in your version now, this zero nine two, it still looks like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but now you have this uh, this new kind of wizard for adding the the device. Mm -hmm. uh, we are trying to to do some improvements on that, uh, but uh, I think right now we uh, with this. Uh, New wizard for adding devices and a few more pop-ups to with with explanations and uh, next steps and stuff. Uh, we're mostly uh, fine with that. Um, our focus, I'd say, so right now our focus is mostly on on testing and cleaning up the code and uh, making sure everything is is working well, so we can uh, make uh, the first uh, major release, I'd say, of Spectre. Uh, so the v v1 release. Um, but um, besides that, um, what's what's coming? Um, I don't think there's something which is specifically for for noobs. So we're just trying to to make it easier all the time with uh, with more like 
tooltips or um, where it, where it makes sense or the um, or like helpers. So here, if you're not connected to to your node, you'll have a little helper now. Um, but yeah, so but we're definitely like um, trying to to figure out what's what would be the, the easiest way to to do that. And if people have suggestions, they they can uh, we're we're listening. <laughs> Right. Uh, are there any like when I when I look into the Telegram groups I'm in there, there there are some like common questions that you should like. What is your perception? Like what is your experience with people coming in? Whether they're experienced intermediate users or you know noobs, what what are like common questions or issues that people have right now or you know wishes desires? <laughs> uh, yeah. So there are quite a lot. I'd say so uh, a lot of stuff that could could come up. So one thing is uh, more like flexible experting, so of, of wallet history. Mm -hmm. uh, so just ex export it. Uh, we're just figuring out what is the best format for exporting, uh, either with with like a CSV. With uh, with we're trying to to figure out like uh, which fields people would want there uh, the most. Uh, but like nicer exporting is is one thing. Uh, another thing is probably um, uh, so also like uh, another thing mobile support, which is uh, people uh, I'd say people uh, were asking about. Uh, so just making it more mobile friendly. So if you're using it from from mobile device, uh, I, you could do uh, right now. Uh, some of the functionality is still disabled because it just. Uh, uh, doesn't uh, look good on, on mobile, so it's not usable some parts, like sand or stuff, so it's kind of a watch only on mobile right now. Uh, but we're planning to also make it fully compatible for, for mobile, so you could use it from, from anywhere, even on your mobile phone. Um, besides that, uh, we're right now probably, uh, another thing which will probably come very soon is uh, Electrum import and export option. So right now we already have uh, an export Electrum uh, watch only file, uh, which Michael Flaxman added uh, into Spectre. Uh, but we, uh, I hope we will have uh, like more uh, proper uh, import and export um, options uh, for, for Electrum. Um, besides, it's just listening to, to whatever the community is asking for. Um, so we will have to see. What about mobile wallets? I mean, can I theoretically or practically, is it already possible like to export um, a single SIG wallet, let's just say, you know, to to a mobile wallet? Let's let's say, you know, whatever that is, like like a blue wallet or, or, or Blockstream Green wallet. Is that possible? Yeah, so I'm not sure. I don't think so with Blockstream Green because I think they have like a different model, but I'm quite sure that with Blue Wallet it should work. Uh, of course, if your device is uh, using USB, you will, uh, it will not work for, for signing, so it will be watch only. But I'm pretty sure with something like a cold card or with Kobo, it should uh, it should work. Um, yeah, so we have, I'm pretty sure Blue Wallet would support that and I know fully noted uh, it, would, it works great. Um, so yeah, we're, we, there is compatibility with, with uh, also with mobile options. All right. I think we have covered pretty much everything now for this uh, episode. Um, I'd love to, you know, maybe go into more detail or more practical demonstrations uh, next time. Uh, some things, you know, that might might not be so self-explanatory, uh, you know, uh, but. Ben, thank you so much. Uh, uh, if if I've missed anything, like if you want to have any final thoughts, suggestions, recommendations, or where people can find you on Spectre on, on Twitter, please let us know. Let my yeah, listeners know. Sure. So, so my handle is just uh, underscore and then Ben Kaufman uh, on Twitter. Um, you can find me there. You can find uh, Spectre at at uh, GitHub, so it's crypto advanced uh, slash specter uh, dash desktop. Um, but yeah, and you can always reach, uh, reach us on, on the Telegram group, on uh, the uh, GitHub issues, um, or just on Twitter if you want. Um, yeah. All right. Well, you have all the links also here. Yeah. 
wonderful. I'll put those all in the show notes and write maybe just in in, in short keywords uh, the topics we talked about. Uh, but um, I'm sure you know people should definitely listen from beginning to end and uh, and just you know I think people should just try out right. I mean they can't if they just go with a couple of sets and just open up and you know download with their you know download the Spectre desktop version or connect it. Or just connect, you know, via the Spectre app uh, through my note uh, dashboard. I think that's in my, from my experience and my own, you know, testimonial. I think that's the easiest path uh, to, you know, setting it up and opening uh, and, and, and adding devices, creating wallets. Go for mm -hmm. it and, and and try it out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I'm always like happy to help if if I can. Uh, to if somebody needs help setting it up or something. Thank you so much. And yeah. Sure. I'll talk to you soon again. Yeah, talk soon. Thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me. So what did you think? How, did you enjoy this? Uh, I really wanted to have this like focused and really have it compact and keep it like limited, uh, the content of this tutorial, just to focus and concentrate on the single key wallet, especially for beginners, for noobs, you know, who don't have any clue about how to create, uh, you know, a single key wallet and to take care of the privacy the security to be connected to full node you know just the basics so if you have any like comments or uh, wishes or you know for next for next time if you want to go into detail with ben kaufman or maybe even stefan snigarev you know the uh, one of the lead developers at spectre just let me know I'll set up, you know, a new special episode. I want to do more of this series. Also, I want to do like a special episode with a special series with Economy Alchemist, who is really like knowledgeable about security, privacy, you know, technical stuff. So uh, please follow Ben Kaufman on Twitter. You can join Spectre's Telegram group. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, podcast platforms, share it, retweet it, like it. Uh, give me a five-star review review on for any of the podcast interviews I've done. If you've loved any of those on iTunes or any other podcast platform, thank you so much again for, for supporting me, for listening to my podcast show and to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you soon again.